You know, what's interesting is that people of all faiths live on our common home, Mother Earth. It's a very powerful motivator for most human beings to understand um, where we all come from. And it's something that the Jain community has been fortunate to have had a chance to work with faith in place. Not only as far as putting up organic vegetable gardens, but just understanding sustainability. Faith in Place does something that is simple to explain and complicated to explain at the same time. Faith in Place attempts to meet people where they are. People are all over the place. Congregations are all over the place. Denominations are all over the place. It's a very wide spectrum of how people act on their beliefs. We don't have a one-size-fits-all approach. We talk to congregations, we talk to communities, and we say, you know, what is it that you need? What is it you've already done? What is it you want to do? We figure out what it is that we can bring to you that fits with what you need and what works for your group of people. There is a tremendous amount of work to be done in our community. Faith in Place knows that. And, and gets that. Uh, there are curricula that have been developed at Faith in Place to help bridge that gap. We have um, a number of programs, the Weatherization Initiative, Urban Agriculture, we do advocacy, we do education, and all of um, our programs work collaboratively to um, empower and inspire congregations to be more involved in the environment. The weatherization program was an initiative, a partnership with the City of Chicago and the um, Department of Conservation where we actually taught um, youth how to install weatherization kits. They learned the skill, they learned about weatherization initially. So, you know, putting the plastic on the windows or um, conserving water with the filters. One of the first things that Faith in Place does with congregations is to do education on what that congregation can do right away. So that begins always with starting help by helping a congregation connect their theology to better care for the earth. And we do that by connecting them to other congregations that are very similar. And they work together to connect their faith to good practices. And then where Faith in Place comes in is we help them put those practices into place. So whether it's reducing their, their energy bills and reducing their carbon impact and understanding why that's important from a faith-based perspective, or that's installing a rain garden to capture rain runoff, or to reduce water usage within the congregation, and why that's so important. Or it's to start a small garden where um, we've, we've gone into congregations and we've done workshops on how to grow a tomato plant in a pot, and that can be really powerful. Faith in Place has been um, a great resource because the things they've offered the garden, I mean, you know, they've uh, helped us with the butterfly garden and, you know, bring the youth program in. Green Team works with them for the uh, weatherization program. They have a library of resources, films, and information, and uh, some of the Green Team members have taken advantage of going down there. We're about to go uh, forth with a Raise the Roof campaign where we are going to place a green roof on this facility, and it's faith and place that it's been our inspiration. I spoke to the congregation about a meeting that I had with the Department of Energy. It was because of faith and place that I was able to have that meeting with the Department of Energy to learn about uh, Energy Star, to learn about uh, green roofs, to learn about faith communities building green and renovating green. That we're a statewide organization is really important. We don't just serve the people of Chicago or the people of the inner city or any particular group of people. We serve the entire state. And so things that are important to, to people who are uh, in rural Illinois are very different than things that are important to people that are in the inner city but both are equally as important, and we need to be helping both sets of congregations, uh, both, both types of communities. And so when we do things like help uh, congregations set up a CSA, um, that's applicable both in, in rural Illinois and in, say, the south side of Chicago, but they need to be done differently. Every faith community has that uh, eco-sensibility uh, inherent in the scripture, uh, in their faith, in their theology. And I think that uh, for this new millennium, Faith in Place demonstrates that it's the kind of social justice, eco-sensitive uh, model that all organizations should learn from and be inspired by. One of the great resources that Faith in Place provides 
is things like our Faithful Citizen Workshop, through which people can come and learn exactly how our government works and what role they can play in it and how they can shape our government. We have to change laws in our community and our government that will make the environment better and make it also easier for us to be stewards because we have laws to protect the environment. Faith in Place actually brings down the largest contingent of any organization within the Illinois Environmental Council Lobby Day. We have the largest group of people. That's a big deal. When you have, when you have people running around the Capitol and you have people talking to the legislators and they say, who are all these people? They're not just a random assortment of people. Um, you know, we talk about how corporate interests sway our government or, or, you know, particular lobbying groups. Well, you know what? Citizens are a lobby group. Citizens are the most powerful lobby group. And so when you have citizens lobbying the government, they say, who are these people? They're citizens. Well, what kind of citizens? They're faithful citizens. These are people who are motivated by their faith. They take these things very seriously and their faith impacts their view on the environment. We've seen when we haven't taken care of Mother Earth, the kind of environmental destruction that can happen. It won't happen by waiting for someone else to do it, whether it's the government or a company or some politician that made a promise. It'll happen when groups of people collectively say, this is our home and this is how we want to handle things. The faith community is, because of its values, its sense of kindness and purpose, that that is the very community that needs to, right now, at this moment in human history, to galvanize to be a catalyst for the change that is so desperately needed to care for our home. And I would go so far to say that if the faith community doesn't do this, who will?